Philip Shaibu was impeached during the House's plenary session in Benin City, the Edo State Capital, in a move that began months, months ago following the sad relationship between Godwin Abasaki and Mr. Shaibu. Mr. Shaibu's impeachment followed the adoption of the report of a seven-man committee set up by Chief Judge of Edo State, Justice Daniel Okungboa, to investigate allegations of misconduct against the Deputy Governor. Monday's impeachment comes as a federal high court in Abuja was to resume sitting in the lawsuit filed by Mr. Shaibu to challenge the Edo State House of Assembly's plan to impeach him. In a swift reaction to the impeachment, Mr. Shaibu said it was an attack on the country's democracy. It is with heavy heart, yet a resolute spirit, that I come before you to address the recent events that have unfolded within our dear state. I denounce in strongest term the illegal impeachment by the Edo State House of Assembly over Trump up charges. This is not just an attack on me as an individual, but on the very democratic principle that we hold there. It's a dangerous descent into dictatorship and a threat to the foundation of our democracy. Let it be clear that this impeachment was harshed because of my ambition to contest the Edo State 2024 governorship election under the People's Democratic Party, PDP. An ambition that is a legal right to all citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It's a sad reality that in our political landscape, ambition is meant with resistance. And those in power seek to silence opposition through illegitimate means. On the ousted uh, former Deputy Governor of Edo State, Philip Shaibu. Now let's talk this through by speaking with a uh, guest who is joining me to discuss this is the chairman, Edo Voters Movement, Comrade Osaretin Belo. Uh, Belo Osaretin, thank you so much for joining us on Standpoint. Thank you very much for having me in your studio. Right, so let's start by looking at, um, you know, the State House of Assembly, which met over the report of the seven-man uh, panel set up by uh, Chief Judge of Edo State, Justice Daniel Okungboa, you know, headed by retired Justice S.A. Uh, Amonwa, over alleged constitutional infractions, making Mr. Philip Shaibu the 17th deputy, governor's, uh, 17th gov deputy governor uh, uh, impeached in Nigeria in the Nigeria political history. So in all of this, former deputy governor Philip Shaibu has kicked alleging injustice. What has been your reaction to the recent political development in Edo State as it affects especially uh, the former deputy governor Philip Shaibu? Uh, thank you, Mr. Ibrahim. Uh, what you see playing out in Edo State today is democracy in action. It's politic, politics, politics, and politicking. Uh, Matthew Philip Shaibu is not the first deputy governor that has been impeached in Nigeria. I think it's this issue should not be exceptional. And of course, Ekpeyong, Chris Ekpeyong was impeached in Akwaibon. Omisore was impeached in Osun. Abadibe was impeached in Abia. Uh, Simon uh, Achuba was impeached in Kogi and several others, just as you enumerated, 17. He has just made the list. Whether positively or negatively, he has made, he has made history. So uh, it was not the way I see it. The status of assembly carried out their constitutional responsibility by looking at the panel report that was set up by the chief uh, judge of the state. So I looked at the offenses and look at the infractions. And they, they, they felt that he has a case to answer. And mark you, this impeachment was done pro domo soir. Nothing happens without some vested interest. So I wish him well. He has made history as the first deputy governor to have been impeached in the Edo State.
Are you saying that you, you, you didn't see anything wrong in the way and manner the State Assembly actually went about the impeachment of Mr. Uh, Philip Shaibu because he alleged injustice, he said that it was due to the fact that uh, he presented himself for, um, you know, to run for governor, you know, come September this year, later this year. Do you not see any injustice just as he has alleged? That is the story being painted in the, in the public uh, space to be the public sympathy. There is more than meet the eyes that the eyes can see. Mark, you maybe you are looking at this issue, a very critical issue from the side point or the inside of uh, the former deputy governor of Edo State. Uh, you should have also put the uh, side of the governor or whoever. In perspective, I heard from the from the grapevine that uh, he did not uh, uh, carry out certain functions of state, and he was also uh, leaking out some official uh, information to, in quote, perceived enemies. I think uh, they that took the decision, they, they wore the shoes and they know where it pitches. My take on that. Uh, yeah, I said you don't simply agree with those who are alleged that Governor Obaseki doesn't like uh, Philip Shaibu because he had been an acting governor twice with, you know, full powers, something we know that is not common, uh, is not a common practice among, among governors in Nigeria. So uh, he could only have done that based on the trust or camaraderie they both share, couldn't he? Uh, Mark, you, you are an interviewer. But I hope you are not trying to be a judge in this matter because you are, it's like you are speaking as if you are the uh, uh, legal advocate for Shwaibu. I'm not, uh, you know, this we have people that we are together you know, I'm as actually, friends. I'm actually, putting, I'm actually putting a position of, you know, others who argue. So I'm asking whether you agree with those who actually said that it is not because of the claim that uh, the former deputy governor um, you know, had a bad blood with um, his principal, which uh, talking about uh, Godwin Obaseki. So some said that he actually is not based on the fact that he hated him. That's the question I'm trying to ask you. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, you cannot have two captains in one ship. I don't believe in that uh, trajectory. I, I, I believe as a deputy governor that has no uh, constitutional responsibility to discharge, uh, must be lawyer, must be seen to be lawyer and committed to his principal who happens to be the, the governor of a state. However, the, nobody will just throw away a good material. I think Philip uh, Shwaibu uh, knows the rule. If you have read the book called uh, The Coming Anarchy by Robert Dick uh, Kaplan, I think he, 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 he saw this coming. Mark you, before we get, go to the position we are today, uh, some of the elders of the state and critical stakeholders intervened when Philip Shwaibu took the governor to court. So Philip Shwaibu should have known that a day like this will come. So however, it has happened, he's not a former governor, I don't have sympathy for him, uh, because when they were together, they did not invite us. So uh, since the, 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 the relationship has gone, uh, gone so far, so uh, Edo State must move forward because Edo State is bigger than any individual, including the governor of the state. Uh, looking at that, Mr. Shaibu's um, ouster paved the way for uh, the swearing in of the 38-year-old Godwin's um, Omobayo from Akoko Edo as deputy governor. What impact do you think this, probably this move would have on the September the 21st, 2024 uh, governorship election in your state? Uh, if you listen to the young man, I don't know him, but I, I saw him when, they were, when he was being sworn in. He said he's going to cooperate with His Excellency Godwin Nogagasa uh, Obaseki to end well. That should be the role of a deputy governor. Not this capadoism uh, of uh, a lot of a lot continual uh, approach to governance. So I hope uh, the new governor that I just, the, the new deputy governor that I just sworn in will learn from the error of uh, Shuaibu and uh, understand that when you are a deputy governor, 
your, you are just like a spear tire. You are the beck and call of the governor and uh, to carry out the functions of the governor as may be directed. And you must be seen to be loyal, committed, and ready to be a law abiding to the course of, state, of the state. You know, one of the reasons uh, for Mr. Schreiber's ambition is uh, premised on the argument that PDP has never produced a governorship candidate from Edo North since 1998 when it was created. But then, even though Mr. Omobayo has, um, has about seven months to run the affairs of the state side, up, side by side, uh, Godwin Obasaki, uh, he has argued that Akoko Edo people has, uh, or have rather, never had this kind of opportunity and promised that they would mobilize and vote for Governor Godwin Obasaki's governorship candidate. Uh, talking about Dr. Asue Ikodalo at the election. What do you make of this? Uh, well, uh, you don't expect less from a, a deputy governor that by uh, providence. Mm -hmm. uh, he just came in uh, by, the, mm -hmm. uh, by what happened to uh, the SY uh, deputy governor. So I think he must try to uh, prove to his, uh, his uh, or guard the top that he has something to offer. However, I'm not a member of... Uh, uh, PDP, uh, what they do there is not of my interest, but I'm a critical stakeholder in a do in a do in a do project. Critical stakeholder in I didn't I didn't catch that. Critical stakeholder in a do a do project. Okay, so how how have the people of a do state been reacting to the political development? Because you can't extricate them with the affairs of what is happening, the affairs going on, you know, at the state house, where the governor, you know, taking several decisions, and the deputy governor, former deputy governor, also, you know, reacting or kicking against what had happened to him politically. All of these, the Edo people are at the center of all of these. How do you think the Edo people have been reacting to this, you know, political development so far? Uh, it has become uh, a public. It has become a public debate uh, that uh, what has not happened uh, in those days before has happened today. Uh, I think uh, today Saturday is making this uh, six day, six day that uh, this uh, unexpected uh, incident happened. So definitely, uh, the market women, the 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 drivers, and uh, the common man on the street. Uh, it has become a subject of a, a debate. But uh, above all, at those state, we move on. And uh, I mark you, I'm not a member of PDP. I'm a chieftain of APC. Uh, the APC, APDP uh, pains is uh, PDP gains. So we will, we will expect uh, more trouble for them uh, as we move forward. But then, so it's, it's part of the thing because one will not be asking what, what is the next line of action for Philip Shaibu because um, if you're thinking about the kind of card he's bringing on the table, would it be defecting to your party following the meeting with the APC chairman of Edo State or would he still remain a loyal member to the PDP in the coming election? What are you seeing within your own camp? That is left for Philip Shaibu uh, to, to, to decide. Uh, in APC, uh, a party that, by God's grace, we are going to take the governance of the state under the able leadership of uh, Senator Modi Okpewolo and his only mate, uh, Dennis uh, uh, Idahosa. Uh, we, no, we have no room. We have no room for Philip Shaibu because uh, as an impeached deputy governor, I don't think he's, uh, he's having anything to offer to any party that he will defer to. Uh, my advice to him, if you cannot stay in PDP and be loyal to their doctrines, you can look for a Muslim party and uh, try to groom, since he said that he has uh, the, the war chest to, to do and not do. But in the APC, we have already put our house in order and we are working. And, uh, 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 no cost, uh, no, no, not, nothing to fear. Uh, I assure you that uh, APC will form the next governor, government. Uh, after 20, 21st September 2024. Mr. Philip Shaibo is not welcome in your party, even though he, he had been a member of the party before, you know, what happened in the last election happened before uh, he was now, you know, he defected to the PDP alongside Gordon Obasaki and some other 
uh, members uh, of your party who, you know, left with him, you know, talking about the local government chairman and some of them who had now returned to the APC. Are you saying that is not welcome uh, to, to your party? Because I feel APC, you know, is more like an all-commerce affair. Uh, history will often repeat itself because many of the future the, the, uh, uh, refuse to learn from the experience of the past. Uh, Felix Abuda left APC as a deputy governor to PDP. If he, if he chooses to come back to APC, is he coming back as a, as a, as a, as a deputy governor or as an impeached deputy, uh, deputy governor? Just like uh, Ochomole, our leader, uh, rightly put it when he was having problem, uh, uh, problem with uh, uh, when uh, Shwebo was having a problem with uh, uh, Godino as of Baseke, he told him, we don't, uh, APC is not a rehabilitation camp for politically displaced people. So let him remain in his PDP and uh, fight his battle there. If he can re redeem himself, good luck. So are you disagreeing with the APC uh, chairman in Edo State who had met with, you know, the deposed, um, uh, the the ousted uh, uh, deputy governor, Philip Shaibu, who was saying that, he, you know, that they will always stand with him, they will stand by him, and he definitely will triumph against this political travail he's experiencing. Those are, those are political statements. Do you know why, do you know the reason why Honorable Jerry uh, Jared Tenebe went to go and uh, see uh, uh, Shaibu? It's beyond what we are seeing in the public space. And I believe one of the reasons he went to go and see Shaibu is to ask him of his research that he, he, he said that Philip Shaibu wrongfully took from him. That was why he went there. You know, there was a video that went viral, Vara, where uh, Honorable Jared Tenebe accused Shaibu that he stole his uh, Daytona resource worth 250,000 US dollars. And I believe that is why he went there to go and, to go and you know, hop not with him, telling him, but, but this that, is time for you to give me that resource. That remains in the realm of allegation. That remains in the realm of allegation. Uh, it's not allegation. I'm, 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 tell, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, I'm owing to my statement. I'm talking to you audaciously. I'm telling you what I know. It's one of the reasons. Are you, have you seen that video that one father, uh, there was a petition written to the of police, that uh, uh, Philip Shabu stole his street watch, that uh, uh, the IG of police should compel him to give him his street watch. I believe that's why, that is why uh, I expect people to do what's called investigative journalism. It's one of the reasons, uh, uh, Honorable Jared, uh, Jared uh, 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 went to go and see him, to tell him, please give me my street watch. So that you will not give excuses that maybe when they were carrying your properties out of the government house, that was the, the resource got missing. I believe that was, it's one of the reasons. I said it's one of the reasons. Mm. Yeah, but then that, that, that was not actually made, you know, to, to pressmen. But, you know, looking at what Esako West APC leaders and members, you know, did on Tuesday, uh, they protested against this planned return to the APC. They threatened to resist any attempt by uh, Mr. Shaibo to return to the party because, you know, since he left the party in 2020, he had not been able to win any election conducted by the Independent National Electoral Commission, and that his return sure. would not add, uh, you know, value to the party. Do you not consider this as a serious challenge uh, for Mr. Shaibu's political relevance, looking at the role he played in your party when he was in your party before, you know, everything went north, you know, between you and, you know, he himself and his principal, his former boss? Yes, uh, I think that uh, position is very, very correct. It's very, very correct. We are trying to repeat ourselves here. I've said it, said, said it earlier. I said Shaibu left APC to PDP as a deputy governor. He cannot come back to APC as an impeached deputy governor. It's going to be a minus. And again, his people from his ward protested that APC should not admit him. You also know what he did to our leader, Oshomule, when he, 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 he insulted him to the extent of saying that Oshomule will be taken to psychiatric and uh, his brain will be checked. Who, who does that to a leader, a father status in, 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 in Nigeria? So he went, he went Ostraveris. He went uh, uh, out of contest. So today, the law of karma has caught up with him. I have no sympathy for Phyllis Schwaibu. I repeat, 
APC have, have no space for Philip Shaibu. If, if Philip Shaibu is being allowed to come to APC, I will go to court. Yes. But b blood, they say, is thicker than water. Um, he is a close relate, relative of Adams Oshomale, the former governor of Edo State, now senator. Um, do you not feel that there is a way that you can resolve this thing like, like brothers, you know, looking at the close relationship, the close kinship they both share with um, your, uh, you know, party leader in the state? Uh, love is thicker than, uh, blood is thicker than water, but love is the ultimate. Mark you, the name you just mentioned, uh, Commit Adam Oshumule, distinguished senator, Commit Adam, Adam Oshumule, he's a father familiar Omiya. He's a father for all. He's not only a father to, to uh, Shwaibu, who have become prodigal. I repeat, there is no room for Philip Shwaibu in APC. We don't need him. We have about 5.5 million adoid. And we have about 3 point something, uh, uh, 2 point something million voters registered. Then what are we talking about? What is, uh, is coming in, uh, going to make as we move forward? So it should go to other party or look for a motion political party and go and uh, redeem himself, not APC. He has so done more harm, more harm than good to APC than any, any other person. So I keep behind what the Lagos State Chairman of the People's Democratic Party, uh, Philip Ivoji, you know, who urged uh, Mr. Shaibu to be patient with the party, saying that he could still become governor of the state, that, you know, what he needs is perseverance, patience, and by leaving everything in the hands of God. And he feel he should heed this, uh, this piece of ad advice by staying with the PDP. Uh, he has no option that to, to take that advice. I, I think it's a good advice given to him by the Lagos State uh, 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 Chapter Chairman of PDP. So I, don't, I believe uh, discussing this uh, Shaibu matter, uh, we have a flogging issue. He's not the first deputy governor that has been impeached. Why should this own become uh, an issue in Edo State or in Nigeria? Uh, 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 most deputy governors that have taste of history have uh, been impeached and heaven did not fall. So he should go and, he should go and meet his principal. He was not beating APC, he was beating PDP. He should go there and uh, go and sort himself out. Enough is enough. So, what are the plans your party is actually you know, putting in place to ensure that you know, uh, it, it takes back um, the mandate which you felt was taken away by uh, your former member, who is now the incumbent governor, you know, having his, having his you know, political rift with his former you know, ally. Uh, do you feel that the APC is, you know, more than doing enough in order to face the opponents, you know, come September 21st? Uh, I've said it earlier, uh, I'm, a, I'm a, a diehard APC man. Uh, Mark, you, I'm also the coordinator of uh, modification. Modification is an acronym for Monday Pueblo Movement. As we have a, a, a slogan for obedient, the slogan for uh, our campaign today is modification movement. So let me ask you, are you modificated? Inshallah, by God's grace, we are taking a dose state. APC is taking a dose state. We are fully ready. We are good to go. We have a good product to take to the market space. Senator Modi Okpeboro is a good product that can sell, that can, that can sell anything Anytime, any day. Uh, Mark, you go to the senatorial district, go and see the wonderful things that are, that are, that are ongoing. There are free transport, the Pueblo transport, moving from Aguchi to Fosu in Edo State, moving from uh, Iru Ekmen to uh, Aganu Bode. Edo is already working. Edo is already working. And the people are waiting. We, in fact, I, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. For the story in. We are looking beyond the 21st September. So it's a don't do. But uh, uh, is a homeboy, homegrown. He understands the, the problem of the people. He understands the, 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 the political terrain. And thank God our leader, uh, Senator um, uh, uh, Oshomole, is in the system to ensure that uh, victory is delivered. And other heavyweights. Uh, people like Senator uh, Domingo, they are all in the, in the system to ensure that we achieve 
uh, Honorable E.J. Agunaima, we are all working together to ensure that uh, we deliver uh, uh, the, the, the needed advant uh, mandate to the, to the party. Exactly what, um, because before I let you go, but exactly what in a unique selling proposition or unique selling point that you think uh, Mr. Monday of Pueblo has over his, you know, political opponent, talk about Asue Godalo, who the PDP is, you know, bringing forth, uh, do you think he's got a clout to governize his party members to win the elections, you know, come, 20, uh, come September 21st? Because what there is a Labour What do you mean by clout? Uh, what, 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 what do you mean by clout? I'm not the you just mentioned. Who can stand there, Senator Mondo Pebo, is serving is a is serving senator, distinguished senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It's only in Nigeria I hear you people are, will be looking for uh, people that have uh, unnecessary titles. In Senegal, for the four years old boy is the president. There's somebody that has not been tested. And you have one that has been tried, tested, and trusted to consolidate. You are asked, talking about, about cloud. Cloud from where? What is cloud? I'm telling you, I'm putting it before you. You can take that to the market square. Modo Pueblo is going to be the next governor of Edo State. And well, if, that, that if that does not happen, I will, I will, I will leave the state to, to, to Bono State to go and stay there. Well, I can say that I'm proud with your you know, bravery and your conviction, but then that remains to be seen uh, when it comes September 21st, when the people of Edo State you know, go to the poll to decide who their next governor would definitely uh, be. Thank you very kindly for your time. Uh, talk about the chairman. A do voters movement, comrade uh, Osarete Bello. Thank you so much. I hope you are modified. Thank you. Do stay with us here on Standpoint. We'll take a break. I'll be back to talk about the uh, Dosemo market, which made the news throughout the week. Do stay with us. We'll be back. <laughs>